Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you in his name. And today is a great day in the kingdom. We are celebrating several things that I'll mention a little later, but one of the things we're celebrating is our confirmation students have finished their confirmation journey and they will be committing to membership in the Church of Jesus Christ here at Valencia today, along with two other adults who are joining our, our body of Christ here today, Helen and Mary. Um, so we are celebrating all five of them um, joining the body of Christ here in Valencia. Um, I think there are a couple of announcements. Did you have an announcement? You do. You have an announcement. One of the Pasquinellis has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to welcome everybody downstairs in celebration of this great day uh, for cake and some sandwiches and refreshments. So please, uh, provided by the deacons, so please stop, uh, stop downstairs after church and celebrate with everyone. Thank you. And mine is a perfect day today. It's beautiful, it's sunny, so I want you to picture yourself riding on a tractor today. Would that be a beautiful thing to do? So we're looking for volunteers to sign up to help cut grass. Uh, if you don't like riding a tractor, but you like pulling weeds, there's weeds to pull. So we're just looking for some help. Uh, we're going to pass this around. If possible, we like to have the grass cut before Sunday morning, so when we get here, it looks nice. Uh, so again, over the course of the week, if you haven't used our tractor before, it's really a simple device to use. It's literally called Simplicity, um, So, and that was for myself and um, Paul, because we would break the old one up quite often. But anyway, um, it's there. We need your help. Anything around campus, if you can help, we would appreciate that. We're going to pass this around. Please sign up. Um, for anything you can do. This is for grass cutting, but if any time you can come out and help, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Pass it around. Thank you, Mike. So it's a day of commitments. A lot of commitments. Um, also, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, there's a phrase that most Christians know, and it says, God never promised that our faith journey would be easy in this world. And we usually blurt that out or say that or think of that whenever we're faced with challenges. But today's discussion is all about our realistic faith. And it's realistic for several reasons, but for the main reason is that it applies to our daily lives no matter what you're going through. So it's very realistic. And Peter, the Apostle Peter, reminded a group of persecuted Christians that following Jesus is much more important than any challenge you're facing because Jesus and God are more powerful than anything you're facing. And that goes for us, too. God, the truth is God cares for us more than we care about our, our problems and our challenges. And that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, what that means in daily life especially on Confirmation Sunday and New Member Sunday, um, as we all reaffirm our faith in God, it's important to remember those things. Uh, I think that's all the announcements. Anyone else have an announcement to make? No? Let's prepare hearts and minds for worship.
Good morning. Our call to worship. Please pray with me. Be called to worship, Lord of amazing visions. Prepare our hearts and our spirits this day to receive your glad tidings of an advocate. Help make us ready to be your disciples in all that we do, say, and think. For we ask this in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in singing our opening hymn as we stand together, if able. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Also with you. Our call to confession. Let us openly and honestly confess together about our doubts and weaknesses using our prayer of confession. We have to confess, O oh Lord, that we are people who want to have everything proven to us. We hear the message in the scripture of Jesus' ascension, and we smile smugly, not truly believing the vision. Forgive us for our arrogant doubts and attitudes of smugness. Help us remember that everything Jesus taught us was to prepare us to help build God's realm here on earth. We are called to be people of faith, not of absolute proof, as we understand it. Let us place our trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Let us look with eyes of faith as he ascends to the Father. We pray in his name. Amen. Our assurance of forgiveness. Although none of us have stood on the mountaintop to see Jesus' ascension to God, yet we believe in the love and power of Christ who taught us how to be faithful and joyful disciples. Rejoice and believe in him who came that we may have abundant life. In him we are forgiven.
won't you please be seated? Good morning. On behalf of the session, I would like to present Caleb Helinda, Rose Snow, and Tyler Urich, who have been received into membership of this congregation by an affirmation of faith. I also would like to present Helen Neese, who has been received into membership of this con congregation by a reaffirmation of faith, and Mary Gorley, who has been received into the membership of this congregation by a transfer from Swiss Vale Presbyterian Church. Take your time, Helen, we'll wait. <laughs> Not a problem. You all come to us as members of one holy Catholic Church of Jesus Christ, into which you were baptized as well as us, and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ and in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you all bring to us, no matter what your age or experience has been. And as you join with us in worship and service in this congregation, it is fitting that together we reaffirm the vows, the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promises of God which are ours in our baptism. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. So sisters and brothers in Christ, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Christ. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hear these words from Scripture, Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father for us all, who is above all and through all and in all. So, I ask you once again to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the truth and the faith of our church in which we were baptized. So, the four questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and in his love? If so, say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will, with God's help. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. Would you all please pray with me?
Holy God, we praise you for calling each of us to be servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ here at Valencia Presbyterian Church. We thank you for choosing to add to our number brothers and sisters in faith. We thank you for walking with these confirmation students and new members as they fulfill the promises made at their baptism. Continue to walk with all of them as they live out their pilgrimage of faith in your name. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we give all honor, glory, forever. Amen. Don't go, don't go away. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ here at Valencia. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Aaron has something for you. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Psalm, chapter 68, 32 to 35. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. As I had mentioned earlier, today we're celebrating several things. We are, have received into the body of Christ here at Valencia five new members, including our three confirmation students. And you might wonder, now why is that cause for celebration? Is it all about the numbers, five more members at VPC? Mm -mm. I will remind you that the vision of Valencia Presbyterian Church is to grow the body of Christ through faith, love, and service. And although there are several ways we can accomplish that vision, a great way is to receive new members, especially confirmation students. Students and adult new members grow our body of Christ in lots of ways and not merely by adding to our numbers and our attendance. They all have gifts to share with the body of Christ, to strengthen the body of Christ. So secondly, on the church calendar today, we're celebrating Ascension Sunday, when we mark and remember Jesus Christ ascending into heaven from the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem in front of his disciples. Jesus has spent the last 40 days on our calendar reappearing to many people after his resurrection on Easter Sunday. We celebrate and remember because our faith tells us that Jesus is now in heaven with God the Father until he comes again. And friends, as the body of Christ in this world, we live with surprises and challenges each and every day. And we are fond of the phrase, as I said earlier, Jesus never said our faith would be easy because it helps us to face those challenges. But the Apostle Peter is going to remind us in a moment in his first letter that God cares about us so much more than we care about the, all the troubles in our lives. So read with me these words of Peter to some new believers in the church of Jesus Christ. From 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 5 to 11. Listen to God's word. 
In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and, out and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. May God bless our hearing of his word today. All praise, honor, and glory go to him. Boys and girls, it's time for the children's message. Forgot the mic. Power is now bestowed upon me. That actually helps a lot. Thank you, preacher. So I actually am kind of blessed because I get to be a shepherd, like in the real world. And when I say in the real world, I just don't mean in God's world. I mean in the human world where we walk around because I own a special animal. What animal needs a shepherd? Go ahead. Sheep. Go ahead, say that. Sheep. Sheep. Well, this week, our sheep, who are not very intelligent, gave that boy right there a run for his money. He had to go 800 miles on that hot, sticky day that we had chasing after sheep. Because you know what? Sheep are not smart. They are not smart at all. That's why Jesus called us sheep. Because in all honesty, we aren't very smart. We don't always do things the right way. But God the shepherd leads us along the way. And praise the Lord, he gives us all our own gifts and talent. In fact, in that verse 2, I wrote it on my arm so I wouldn't forget it. So I'm going to look right now. It says, God wants you to be you. And that leads me to VBS. Do you remember when I plugged that in? Do you two know how to, do you know how to work outlets? Can you plug that in where I plugged it in? Will you guys get up? Go plug that in for me. Go ahead. You work as a team. Nice job, nice job. Now, AJ, will you get up with the thing that you brought? Do not do it yet. <coughs> there, you see it? Put it over your head like that. So all about VBS is letting your light shine. But everyone here is supposed to be who they are. And everyone here has a different light. Set that, oh, my fault. Set that down with the little dotty thing on top. Don't touch the dotty thing. All right, guys, keep that up high. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right? Now, who can tell me what this is? Go ahead. You're the last one left. Um, a ball. Oh, it's a ball. Wrong answer. Sorry. We're dealing with stars here, people. <gasps> Whoa! What just happened there? Did you guys see that? Did you see that? Wait. You didn't see it? Caleb, you missed it. 
Put your device down real quick. Thank you. You see it? Watch this. What? Whoa. Whoa. You're turning it on. Oh, am I? This is a different technology than yours. You can go ahead and unplug it and bring it back. Now, this one, Tyler, I'm going to let you hold my pretty ball of distraction. Here you go. Go ahead. If you touch this little dot, this is how it magically works. What? Because it's a new technology. See, life always changes. You can sit back down. But God doesn't. God always gives you what we need when we need it. But it's our light that makes it work. I had to work and help getting ready for VBS. And I shake my head like this because it means work. But what work really means is awesome fellowship with friends. What work really means is laughing and joking and putting stuff together and realizing your own talent. Now, if you notice, what color is this? The yellow is orangish, right? And then that, white. See, the moon turns different colors based on the reflection of what's going on. When the sun reflects off of it, it turns that color. So when we're in the night sky, we are a reflection of Jesus. And our light is so important, no matter what it looks like. It can be a giant exploding firework. It can be that cute little safety light in your bedroom so you're not scared at night. Or, like me, it can be in that blinding LED that hurts your eyeballs every once in a while and then shuts off and on like a giant firework or explosion. Because we all have different lights. But God calls us to use our light no matter what it is or how it is. And he puts people in our world to help us realize how important our light is. When our light shines for Jesus, we get to be good shepherds of his whole flock. Close your eyes, fold your hands. There you go. go ahead, go for it. Like this, like that. There you go. You got to trust. That's right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our light. As we explore more about the light that you gave us inside, help us to remember we are supposed to be eager to serve and not eager for money. Because that's what Paul wrote. Paul write, writes that we are supposed to be who we are and use our gifts and talents to serve you, Lord. Help us to remember how important that service is in growing the body of Christ. In your precious and holy name, we all say... Please join us in singing Cares Chorus. Would you please be seated? Would you please pray with me? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. Confirmation students, new members, and body of Christ here at VPC, do you realize how big, how eternal, and how loving your God is? I think you do, and I hope you know what that means for you and for me. Our confirmation class resource was titled, Big God, Big Questions. And today, you all have professed and confirmed your big faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that mean in your and my everyday life? Tomorrow, the next day, the next day, when we leave this place and we go to work, we go to school, we go to the grocery store, we go, to, we go home, what does that mean? There was a pastor that gave an example of this, and his name was Pastor Thomas Long. He tells the story of a confirmation Sunday at the church of a friend of his. It's always a friend of the pastor. They never use themselves in these stories. All the young students who were being confirmed and stood before the congregation and recited a certain Bible passage that they had memorized. Aren't you glad I didn't ask you to do that, Tyler, Rose, and Caleb? <laughs> anyway, for this particular Sunday, the students memorized a passage from Romans chapter 8. The teacher would start out by asking each child, Maria, or Rose, or Tyler, or Caleb, what shall separate you from the love of God? And each child would proudly recite, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. That's Romans 8. So each child recited the passage perfectly, but the congregation was holding its breath for the last child, Rachel. And Rachel was a beautiful Down syndrome child. Would she face embarrassment when her turn came? Finally, the teacher turned to the end of the line and asked, Rachel, what shall separate you from the love of God? And Rachel stood proudly and shouted, nothing. That's the answer. That's truthfully the answer. Nothing. That's right, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. So if you all take nothing else from our weeks together in confirmation class, if you all take nothing else from your previous church experiences and your faith journey, please take and remember this. Nothing can separate you from God's love through Jesus Christ. That is what your realistic faith tells you. So this is important to each of us, each one of us, and it points us to the other reason that your and my faith is very realistic. There will be challenges, there will be obstacles, there will be pain and some suffering even in your journey through this life, along with some surprises. Your faith does not remove any of those things, none of them. Now that you are a baptized and confirmed Christ follower, your life will not be completely easy because of God removing all your challenges. That won't happen. Because you have joined a different church family and reaffirmed your faith in Jesus Christ doesn't mean that your life will be smooth sailing without any hardship. No, but rather, here is what today does mean for every one of us. Our realistic faith will help us weather the storms and help us to walk through them, no matter what and when. And every time, that will happen. This is because you know who God is 
and have professed your realistic faith in him alone. And here is the bonus to having a confirmed and realistic faith. You are given a protector, a guide, a savior for the rest of your life to walk you through the joys and storms of this life and beyond it. In Peter's letter that we read, we should remember that these congregations he was writing to throughout the Roman Empire were being persecuted. They were being jailed. They were being beaten. They were being killed. Once they confirmed their faith, life became very difficult for them. They had to move. They had to pick up and run. They had to hide. There were probably divisions in the church because, as Peter said early on in verse 5, as the young men were not listening to the elders, he called their attention. He called them to account of that. Peter, in the last chapter of his letter, essentially encourages them to be healthy, to be healthy followers of Christ. He speaks to the leadership and the congregation members. He calls them to humble themselves under God's mighty hand during all of their trials. He ends the letter with a final warning. He calls them to be alert and resist the devil. This was very important. It should be noted that it is often during a trial, even today, that Satan attacks the hardest. It was while Jesus that was at his weakest physically that Satan attacked him in the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that Israel was tempted to complain and turn away from God. It was when there was famine in the land that Abraham left the promised land and went to Egypt. It has been said that God uses trials to strengthen our faith, and Satan uses trials to weaken it. We must always be aware of Satan's attacks. Whether you believe in Satan or not, there is an evil presence in the world. But there's also a stronger presence in the world, and that's Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. God has promised us in scripture that whenever we are weakest is when he is strongest. And God walked these new Christians that Peter wrote to through all of their troubles, through all of their challenges, through all of their persecution, just like Peter told them he would. Confirmation students, new members, and everyone, do you really think that Satan wants Caleb, Tyler, and Rose to officially join God's church here at VPC? Yeah. Uh-uh. Satan doesn't want that. Do you really think Satan wants Helen and Mary to join the body of Christ here at VPC? Of course not. Satan does not want anyone listening to me to grow the body of Christ in any way, but especially through faith, love, and service. The other idea that Peter has put in writing in this letter is the encouragement to humble ourselves. Now, humble is an interesting word. How many of us know how to humble ourselves? You don't have to answer. I I suspect that maybe we all know how we should be humble, but we don't do that in our daily lives always, do we? especially during any kind of trouble or challenge, we try to solve the problem. I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough. I can do this myself. Uh Uh-uh. No, you can't. How's that working out for you so far? In the Greek language, Peter here is commanding all believers to make a conscious choice to clothe themselves with humility. And in the Greek language, that humility must, done, must be done in such a way that this is the first thing other people see in us. The Greek form of the verb makes this a command. And is humble-mindedness the first thing people see in you? I hope so. But if not, you have help to make it so 
Peter says, choose to make it so. What does he mean by this humble-mindedness? That's a word we don't use a lot, humble-mindedness. Well, Peter contrasts it with pride. It's the opposite in a lot of ways, and, and, or being proud, and then tells us that God opposes the proud. God also call, gives all the grace that you need whenever you choose to be humble. Being humble in our 21st century goes against a lot of what we're taught in the world, a lot of what is in our culture, but it boils down to admitting your need and my need for God's grace regularly and constantly. Jesus Christ is our model and he clothed himself with humility constantly, daily, always, no matter what was happening around him. And Jesus is calling you and I to be his disciples by choosing to clothe ourselves with humility, no matter the circumstances. Now that's a tall order for any of us, for all of us. But you and I can do this with God's help. Peter closes th this letter by telling us if we do this, we will receive all that we need to be all that God calls us to be. And how many of us as Christ followers want to be all that God wants us to be? I think we all do, right? In closing today, Peter concluded in his letter to the churches in Asia Minor by writing briefly and to the point. That's what I like about Peter. He speaks his mind directly, sometimes loudly, um, and sometimes mistakenly, just like I do. So, like any good writer, he summarizes his main points on how to handle suffering and says goodbye in the name of Christ. And in, his final, in this final sermon, in this letter on how to handle suffering, we find a summary of tips from Peter on how to deal with trouble. How do we deal with trouble? And it applies to confirmation students, new members, and all Christ followers. Be humble. Be carefree by casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be alert. And finally, be strong in your faith. Stand firm is what Peter says. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers and sisters across the world are suffering just like you. Andrew Jackson said this, one person with courage makes a majority. Think about that. One person with courage makes a majority. Courage is expressed in a variety of ways. Courage is the power to endure in unchangeable situations of life. Courage is the ability to give a reason for the hope that lies inside of us. Courage is seeing a wrong and trying to right it. Courage is standing up for liberty and justice for all and stand firm. Stand, to stand firm really is Jesus not fledging or flinching in the face of the cross. That was courage. To stand firm is early Christians not recanting under threats from Rome. That was courage. To stand firm is the church today recovering its real purpose for being. To stand firm is Christianity not becoming a pawn of modern day politics. And to stand firm in the faith regardless of the circumstances of this life because we have God on our side. That's courage. You may ask yourself, what does it mean to serve God and live according to his will, even if I have courage? Since I have this realistic faith, what will that do for me? I think Martin Luther said it well a long time ago when he wrote and spoke, what is it to serve God and do his will? Nothing else than to show mercy to my neighbor, for it is our neighbor who needs our service 
God in heaven needs it not. I want to close with some thoughts and facts about a word that we use a lot in worship and in Bible studies and in prayers. And the word is amen. Anybody know the meaning, the real meaning of the word amen? Some of you do, I know. <laughs> so be it is one way to, to say amen, the meaning. The word amen is a most remarkable word. It was transliterated directly from Hebrew into the Koine Greek of the New Testament and then transliterated into Latin and into English and then many other languages so that it is practically a universal word in any language. People understand it. It has been called the best known word in human speech. The word is directly related, in fact, almost identical to the Hebrew word for believe, which is aman, believe, or faithful. Thus it came to mean sure, or truly, or so be it, an expression of absolute trust and absolute confidence. When one believes God, he indicates his faith Finally, by saying, Amen. When God makes a promise, the believer's response is, Amen. So it will be, or so be it. In the New Testament, it is often translated, Verily or truly. And when we pray according to his word, whether it's in worship, whether it's at home, whether in Bible study, wherever we pray, when we pray according to his word and his will, we know God will answer, so we close with an amen. And so also do we conclude a great hymn or anthem, at least we used to, to sing amen. The word is even a title of Christ himself. The last of his letters to the seven churches begins, this is in Revelation, by the way, begin with a remarkable salutation by the glorified Lord when he says, these things with the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. That's Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. We can be confidently certain that th his word always is faithful and true because he is none other than the creator of all things, and thus he is our eternal, amen. As our text reminds us, every promise of God in Christ is yea and amen. As strong an affirmation of truth can be expressed, that can be expressed in the Greek language or the English language. It is therefore profoundly meaningful that if you look in Revelation, in chapter 21, excuse me, chapter 22, verse 21, at the end of the last book of the Bible, how does it end? Well, let me read it for you. Listen, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Assuring everyone who reads these words that the whole book is absolutely true and trustworthy. Amen and amen. I would ask you now to stand if you're able. We are going to use an affirmation of faith that was put together from all three of our confirmation students' faith statements. I combined them into one, and we're going to recite that now and state what we believe. I believe in God because he is powerful and mighty. He is the giver of life. He made the earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who has saved me and others from sin, who came to earth to sacrifice himself for me. I believe the Holy Spirit is living inside of me. He is helping me grow my faith with God because I'm a work in progress. The Holy Spirit 
helps me grow in my faith by reminding me that God and Jesus will forgive me for my actions and give me eternal life with them. The Holy Spirit guides me with a better path with God. I believe that the church is the body of Christ and I am a part of it. Because of Jesus, I believe I am able to live forever in heaven. Amen. Please be seated. By the way, if you join us after worship down in the Fellowship Hall as part of our celebration, their faith statements are posted on the wall down there above the table. Now we want to enter into a time of prayer when we pray for all people, places, and circumstances on our hearts and minds today. So what are those joys, concerns, or requests? I want to pray for my friend John and Pam and their daughter who lost their baby unexpectedly on Mother's Day morning. Could you fill out a prayer card with the name for me? They're in the pews. Thank you. Caleb. I want to mourn the loss of my grandma from my father, who is on my dad's side. Thank you, Caleb. Nancy. This isn't exactly a prayer, but it's um, more of an announcement. Uh, I just want to remind the congregation that this afternoon at 2 o'clock at Adams Park, we will have again a wonderful, wonderful, inspiring um, Memorial Day service. And I encourage everyone to come. It's beautifully done, and it's a great community uh, get-together. So you're all invited. Today. Thank you, Nancy. Prayers for my stepdaughter who has a hearing uh, this coming Tuesday over a custody battle, which never should have been filed, but uh, prayers for her that everything goes well. And also, we had prayers for uh, my uh, good friend who was a co-driver with me for three or four years, his sister had a uh, cyst that was in her stomach, and uh, they just discovered that she has one on her spine. Her name is Nan. Everybody calls her Nan, and prayers for her that it turns out, uh, turns out best for her. Anyone else? Daisy. Oh, Karen, sorry. Um, prayers for my brother-in-law, Jim Simmons. We've been praying for him for his recovery of stroke. And he was doing really well, and he actually, um, uh, however, tripped on a log while his daughter was using a chainsaw and fell onto the chainsaw and um, has a pretty severe um, cut from the chainsaw. So prayers for... Recovery and no infection as he What's recovers. his name? Jim, Jim Simmons. And again, he's still recovering from stroke. So my best friend's mom, Patty Kerr, found out a couple months ago that she had stage one breast cancer and they thought it would be solved by just surgery, but she had surgery, and it did not work, I guess, so now this summer she has to go through chemotherapy, so just prayers for that. Thank you, Daisy. So I have my oldest son uh, lost their, their oldest son five years ago, and uh, the, the problem is it was negligence on the part of the hospital. And through trying to settle, of course, through lawyers and whatever, 
their heart's desire is that the settlement would involve changes in the hospital to present hope and a positive outcome for people as they continue to come in there for, for care. Could you write some of that down on a prayer card with names? Thank you. Let's take all of these prayers and any, any others on our hearts and minds to God. Let us pray. Holy God of our lives, we come to you today in prayer because you have promised that, number one, when any of us are gathered together, you are here. And number two, whenever we speak to you, you hear us, you listen to us, and you answer us in your ways and in your time. So today, Lord God, we thank you for being here with us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that walks with us in daily life. We thank you that realistically, in our faith, you tell us and you reassure us and you strengthen us and lead us through our daily lives of joys, concerns, requests, celebrations, sorrow, sadness, all of the emotions of this life, and that you are stronger than any of the challenges that we face, and you love us more than we care about those challenges. Lord God, we, you have heard our prayers this day for many things and many people. We ask your blessing upon the family of Caleb's grandma on her passing and we ask your peace settle over that family of, of family members and friends as they celebrate her life and remember her life. We ask your blessing upon the service today in Adams Park as they celebrate our military service and, and memorial service, remembering lives that have been lost. Lord God, we ask your blessing upon um, Ed Walter Sr.'s um, daughter-in-law, Dan, as she struggles um, with this custody battle. And we ask your blessing upon her during this process Strengthen her, walk with her, give her reassurance. We ask your blessing upon Jim Simmons in the accident that happened to him. Give him your healing and peace in knowing that you are the great physician and will heal him and strengthen him. Lord God, we ask your blessing upon uh, Daisy's best friend's mom in her battle with breast cancer. Guide her, walk through her in the chemotherapy that she is about to undergo. Strengthen her through that process and may it heal her body. And Lord God, lastly, we ask your blessing upon an oldest son's son who experienced some negligence in a hospital setting. Help him to recover, help him to um, Help him to help those around in the hospital and on staff to learn from that mistake so that it doesn't happen to other people. Lord God, through all of these challenges, we sense your presence, we can sense your peace, we can sense your strength for all of us. And we know that in our realistic faith, um, you do not remove challenges and hurt and pain and suffering from our lives, but rather you walk us through it. You take us by the hand, you lift us up, and you walk with us through the challenge and help us to learn from it and to grow stronger and closer to you through that process. So as always, we thank you for answering our prayers in your ways and in your time. And we ask that you bless those across the world worshiping at this time. Bless our new confirmation students and new members as we celebrate their gifts that they've brought to Valencia Presbyterian Church. And may this body of Christ grow 
through faith, love, and service. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray all of these things and pray using the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, there are many signs and symbols that we can claim for our faith, but ultimately, it is our active love that reveals who we worship and why we worship. And as we continue our giving here in worship by mailing to the church or, or right here or online on our website, may we all recommit to give what God tells us. Give of our talents, our material possessions to the church with the expectation that they will be used to further God's dream for his kingdom here and in our world. Please commit yourself and give as you are able and join me in dedicating all, all of our giving. Lord God of our lives, we bring you a portion of what you have given to us. Bless these gifts, use these gifts, multiply these gifts around the world and bless the giver and receiver in that process that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So bless us as the giver and bless the receiver that all would come to know you, all would continue to serve you, and may our giving strengthen us as your disciples. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in singing our closing hymn, Mighty is Our God. I'd like to say that after listening to all the requests for prayers and the thanks and the mighty is our God, if we can remember that, it, it, will, it can hold us all. Mighty is our God. Sing with me. to him who can do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power at work within us. Be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, throughout all generations. So go with the love of God, the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship, guidance, and strength of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen.